What's up folks? Ray Pooperton back with another COD Zombies video. Today I've got a complete breakdown of the Season 1 Reloaded patch. This includes an overview of the changes, a look at what changes they made that weren't in the patch notes, as well as how to defeat the new Warlord and the bugs that have come from the patch. As always, you can skip ahead using chapter selection. While they didn't patch the tombstone glitch that everybody's been using to dupe their backpacks, they did patch the exploit on going past stash limit. On top of that, a patch shortly before the launch of Reloaded effectively put a stop to the Etherblade dupe glitch. As an after effect, fixing the Etherblade not coming back to you by hitting an ammo depot is no more. The patch notes obviously go over the new content, the Warlord Dokobai. Dokobai has taken shelter at the top of the skyscraper with the cranes all around it in Zaravan City. They have drones, turrets, and a wheelson guarding them. What they don't say is, with the addition of the new warlord, the old warlord, Legacy is no more. Now I don't know if having two caused instability or if they meant to do that, but this was a huge disappointment for me. I liked the battle at Legacy Fortress, I liked the high chance of a backpack, and I just created a guide to the dang thing like the day before a patch. They also don't mention the Warlord's ability to have the drones carry her off to the other side of the roof, and that they are bomb drones and swarm you every corner you turn. More on the Warlord in the Warlord strat chapter later on. Another thing to mention, the zip lines in the cranes surrounding the building are now blocked off and unusable. My beloved tier pistols got a pretty big nerf. Orange and triple packed used to take one bullet from each gun to take the head off the abomination. After patch, it's twice that. So it appears to have been nerfed by a whopping 50%. It unfortunately checks out with the rest of the special enemies too. In good news, they added an SMG, the HRM9, that shreds. It is just as good as the nerf tiers, maybe a bit better in certain categories. So definitely get that unlocked and leveled up and give it a go. To unlock it, complete all the SMG challenges in the new Battle Pass sector in order. I had no issues, but full disclosure, people are reporting issues with challenge tracking here. On top of the HRM9, they've also added a new LMG, the TAC EVO, with some interesting mobility and handling attachments in the magazine department. I tested it out and it's very solid. Maybe not an instant meta like the HRM9, but for sure solid. To unlock the new LMG, you need to complete 5 week 7 challenges. More good news, they gave us back the 2 seconds they took on decoy duration. On top of that, they added 2 seconds to monkey duration and they now track dogs as well. More good news, the VR11 has been added to the loot pool in the dark ether locked rooms. You now have an equal chance of getting the VR-11, Raygun, Scorcher, or Wonderwaff. This is huge for solo Dark Ether loot runs as it is now fairly easy to get all three contracts done by yourself. First I want to mention a big change to Abominations that was not included in the patch notes. The last mouth eye no longer follows the same health as the first two. The last eye will not explode until you drain all health. You will get crit damage even when it's not open when firing into it, but you must drain the health completely instead of how it was, all three eyes having a set amount of health, and when all gone, pop. This drastically increases the time it takes to kill Megas, and I honestly hope they revert back to how it was. On top of this, there's an increased spawn rate in the red zone. Almost every Mega spawn on the map had an active Mega in all my games since patch. They have also seemingly increased the amount of super sprinters and added them to lower tier zones again. Confirmed by the official Twitter, the devs have rewarded everyone who plays at least one match, one of every wonder weapon, as well as three legendary tools and three triple pack crystals as an apology for game crashes and instability. Players can now move immediately after successfully interacting with ether extractors. Friendly pet hellhounds will now retain their name and level when traveling to the Dark Aether. Players can now choose to leave their squad. The option is located where you would go to join or invite. Players will now also be notified of certain progression milestones when completing missions. 
will announce every 10 kills. Extractor animation change applies to all animations that use the handheld hack device. The animation also seems way quicker on Outlast and seems a bit better on not starting the hack animation and therefore failing to work. The friendly pet hounds that follow you into story missions still have the icons as if they've been upgraded, but they sadly haven't. They've patched the dog upgrading to the story missions level, so no more getting a quick level 1 dog before heading off to story exfils. They have also made it so if you have an Etherblade equipped, you cannot use an Etherblade case. A good QOL change that prevents folks from making costly mistakes when rifling through their inventory. Another nice quality of life change that they didn't list in the notes is the new cooldown timer on schematics. No longer do you have to highlight each one to see how long is left. Now for the bad news. Tombstone now glitches and doesn't set if you don't wait until the aftermatch stuff is complete. So let the game do its thing before exiting or you risk your tombstone not showing up the next game. If on a team, use the new leave team feature or just wait until everyone is out or dead and the squad eliminated screen has played. There are also a few skin bug fixes. The Bone Collector and Slay Operator skins now appear as they should in the Strike Team menu. What they don't say is the vehicle skin we have earned for completing the Act 2 story mission, Warmageddon, is fixed and it looks sick. It's honestly my favorite vehicle skin ever, the zombie on the front moves, and the LTV just looks incredible in general. Design Team did a hell of a job on this baby. On top of that, according to Reddit user Zombies 8 Brains, the Mastercraft WSP Swarms blueprint now works in Zombies as well. They addressed an issue that allowed players to damage other players in Modern Warfare Zombies, thank god. They closed an exploit that allowed players to carry more than two weapons at a time, although I saw a Reddit post saying someone had found another way, so we'll see on that. They addressed an issue that would create a contraband copy in Insured Slot 2 when it was equipped as a secondary weapon. This again is questionable as I saw multiple posts about insured weapons turning to contraband still. But I'm not mad at this bug. <laughs> There's a lot of mercs and reinforcement choppers continuously spawn. So obviously gold plates and dogs may help. Have a 3 plate and some self revs at the very least. They want you to go the standard route, get the key from a stronghold safe, defeat the wheelson on the ground floor, elevator up, work your way all the way around the roof to the other side through sentries and lots of mercs and drones, a corridor with shield guys at the end, and then to the boss. So they may patch the workarounds. That said, there's a few tips on breaching it much easier. This lone zip line still functions, you just have to jump on the pallets from here and then jump up and mantle the zip line at the top. You can also use this zip line to get onto a roof nearby, and then this zip line over to the fortress roof from here. Another option if you spawn far away is to find a teleporter and put in down arrow, fish hook, up arrow, and it will port you onto this roof. Once across, you can skip a large portion of the enemies and traps by landing a perfect jump here, allowing you to mantle through this window. I couldn't pull it off though. This puts you right where the warlord spawns. Alternatively, you can also use the scorcher to hop over from the nearby roof. All these methods allow you to skip fighting the wheelson near the elevators and skip bothering with the keycard. You can also just time it and run past the wheelson straight into the elevator. Hit the button and go up. From here, you can scorch her up and over the doors through the open ceiling if you don't want to bother with the key. Try and land on this roof behind the sentries. Take out both sentries and go to town on the warlord using the roof as cover. Again, they may patch this and make it so she doesn't spawn until the key is used, or just put a roof over the top. Another traversal tip, you can mantle this ledge and skip this part with the sentries and go straight downstairs. You will have to deal with this hallway with shield guys at the end and bomb drones galore, but use the weapons in the next chapter and you'll be fine. Alternatively, many equipment deal with shield guys, any explosive lethals, and all tacticals that stun, i.e. stuns, shock sticks, gas nades, etc. The best guns to kill the new warlord are pretty much the same as the last. 
the ray gun works incredibly well against all mercs, choppers, sentries, and the warlords themselves, and without even papping. Waff is equally good and possibly a faster warlord kill than the ray gun. The ether blade helps out a lot for the regular mercs, goes right through shields, and helps damage the warlord as well. Any meta bullet weapon works too. Extra points for using the new SMG as one of the camos requires merc kills. As per usual with any large update, it comes with some bugs. First one is a very strange bug that involves being picked up by pleeing as well as leaving squads. Sometimes your inventory including money and plate carrier status will seemingly switch with another players. It is all visual as the plates and money have no effect or actual use. Also it will falsely show votes to leave for the Dark Aether and I'd assume other story missions even when you've left a squad and are now solo. It will not actually bring you in with them but it sure scared me thinking that might. Last thing to mention and it's kind of a cool bug. If you go to grid D3 or E3, there's a bug happening that looks like an earthquake has caused a massive seismic shift to push part of the earth up. But that about wraps up this guide, I hope it helps. Peace!